Good morning. Good to see everybody out this morning. We appreciate you being out in the house of the Lord and to those that will be joining us online in a little bit, or as we'd say in the country directly. So uh, we appreciate everybody out this morning. And boy, it's an absolutely beautiful day out here in Florida. I mean, that, this is why you live in Florida, right here, just about right. We've got motorcycles lined up out there. And uh, man, we're, we're in good shape. So we appreciate you being here and uh, appreciate those that are online. We've gonna, got a lot of things to talk about this morning. Don't forget announcements. Thanksgiving is coming up on Thursday. Don't forget that. So uh, take time to be thankful. Did you thank the Lord for anything today? Yes, sir. Okay. Then don't forget we're taking up money for the kids, for the kids, our children's church kids. And then also if you're a part of our church and you've got a child that needs help, uh, please let us know. Christmas dinner will be on December the 15th at 6 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet in the back for those coming and then for those for what food you're bringing. If you're going to bring something that's not listed on the food, just write it down so we'll know so that we don't have too much in one thing. So we're looking forward to that. Got a good crowd already signed up for that. And then children's Christmas program will be Sunday morning the 17th. And Christmas Eve communion will be Sunday night the 24th at 6 p.m. And then, uh, boy, does it seem like Christmas is almost here? Yeah. Does it to anybody? Huh? Oh, yeah, decorations. Are Man, they've been out for months, haven't they? And then we've got a young adult get-together on January the 13th. We've got a revival begin on January the 24th, so begin to pray and ask people to attend that. So we've got a lot of things coming up over the next couple months. I hope that you will be able to be a part of all that and join up. And uh, then, of course, we'll have, they're decorating the church and decorating the, the, where we're having the dinner and all that stuff. But, wow, we've got a lot going on. Ephesians 3.20, don't forget to pray today. John, I need to tell you something. I talked to the engineer this morning, so let me forget to tell you. Ephesians 3.20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So continue to pray for a church that we'll see more people saved and, and people come to the Lord. Amen? Amen? And praise the Lord for everything that he's doing. Pray for everybody that's leaving and going out of town, traveling over the holiday. If you're going out for Thanksgiving, please be safe. Some people are traveling for a birthday coming up. But uh, we'll be talking about that this weekend. So pray for our military and our police and all of our first responders. Pray for Nina and the Ukraine as she ministers over there. Pray for the nation of Israel. We stand with Israel. Amen. Amen. Pray for Randy and Mary Perry. Randy's results came back good. He's got another test. I believe it's probably next week, I believe. And then continue to pray for Sebi and Stacy and their ministry and their daughter and granddaughter. I saw on Facebook that Sebby had his had his uh, uh, granddaughter there with him. Had all the grandbabies there Sunday, and then had must have had uh, uh, Becky's daughter there too up visiting. Pray for Pastor Steve and Paula and their ministry and their family. Pray for Pastor Matt Roberts and his family. He's still got some tests he's going through over there in Arcadia, and uh, pray for him. Pray for Christy Butts. She's got the flu. The flu's going around. Did you know that? So uh, pray for Christy. She's got the flu. AJ has the flu. KK is not feeling well. Roxanne's niece, Rachel, is home but still still needs prayer. Ray Broderick has the flu. That's Susan's husband, Ray. Rowdy, they just put him to sleep. I, talk, I texted with Susan a while ago. They had just put him out. They're putting him to sleep to cut that tooth out today, and we pray that Rowdy does good and everything goes well with that. Uh, DJ Kimber broke her ankle and is having surgery today. That's Mary Martinez's mom. So, so pray for her. Rosemary Taylor is having surgery on the 27th. That's where that 27th date came in, I bet. She's having surgery on the 27th. Priya and Robin Porter, he's not doing well. He's in hospice. So pray for him. Uh, pray for Christy McKinney. She's got a large tumor in her brain. That's Dixie Long's niece. Dorothy Carreri, that's Ernie's mom. Ernie's in West Virginia with his mom. In fact, I think they have a doctor's appointment today. So she's got upcoming 
heart surgery. Pray for pray for them. Uh, Brian and Mary, uh, uh, all the kids, they're sick. I don't I don't know if it's the flu, but pray for them. Uh, Brother Kanuki's having his knee replacements done in December. One on the first, and another one on the fifteenth. Andy Wortham has stomach surgery scheduled for December the fifth. Donnie Bannister's mom, Jean, has pancreatic cancer. Sebby's on there. I understand Shelly Dixon. I saw a picture of the day for somebody. The forest fires in West in Virginia are really bad, so remember them and all the all the people fighting those. Uh, Bill and Shirley Marr. Bill's not here today. He had a bad day yesterday, but is feeling something better today. Ronnie Precht has cancer, not doing well. Barb Nichols is not doing well. Mike Smith has cancer, not doing well. Shirley's got some tests run and still being treated for pneumonia. Uh, Myrna asked us to remember Stephen and Christian and all of our military people. Barbara Davis has dementia and is not doing well. Uh, Kelly Chapman's dad had a stroke and, and during a procedure, so pray for him. Eugene Ladd has cancer, and the doctor's only given him a couple of years. That's a friend of uh, Daniel Jenkins, Betty Music. Uh, pray for her and her son. They lost her son not long ago. That's Evelyn's sister, and they both need to be saved. And then Carol Anderson has pancreatic cancer. Sharon Watts, one of our bus drivers, will be having upcoming back surgery. Uh, Sherry Higginbotham, or another bus driver, is sick. Pastor Paul Buster is in the hospital with a possible stroke. That's a friend of Eddie Walker. Uh, Denny Reagan has a small tumor on his pancreas, and he goes to the doctor on December the 6th. He'll be scheduled for his next MRI. That's FBCC Colorado out there. Karen Morse is having a hard time with her chemo treatments. Uh, Estel Murray is home but still needs prayers. Uh, Carla Gowers has plasma cell leukemia and needs prayer. That's Mary Huey's niece. That'd be Big John Huey's relation. Shelly Dixon's brother-in-law, Allen, is not doing well. Also, her sister, Shannon. Sue Fogg is waiting on results of her MRI. And Logan Brown is scheduled for surgery on the 31st of January. And Ronnie is here today, and Ronnie is waiting on surgery to be rescheduled sometime in January. And then Dennis Green that's a, uh, has brain cancer, and that's a nephew of Chris McNabb. And then... We got a ton of people on there this morning. Little Jackson is still on the on the on the uh, uh, ventilator. ventilator. Two years old. Bless his little heart. We got so many people on our prayer list. I hope you looked over it again. Be thankful that you're not on it. But man, there are, there are a lot of people. It's got a lot of sickness. A lot of things going on right now. And if you're able to get out and move, able to be, or just praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just, I'm going to hold both hands up so you can see and just say praise the Lord. Amen. Sebby said it's raining now So that, uh, before the forest fires up there in Virginia. So I don't know how close that is to Sebby, but I know some other people had posted about that. So uh, it's always a dangerous thing for uh, Dennis and Joe be with them. They're, they're away. And they were in our hometown of Logan, West Virginia, yesterday. Sent pictures. I tried to tell them where to eat, and I don't think they listened to me. You know, nobody listens to me. But uh, any, anyhow, I pray that they have a good, safe trip. Somebody's at the door out there. And uh, pray that everything goes well. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful this morning to be in your house. And, Lord, as we got up this morning, got the podcast out, and began to thank you for things in my life. There are just uh, so many things we... It's hard to just thank you for one thing. If one thing leads into another and to another and to another, and I'm, I've got a feeling that's the way Thanksgiving is supposed to be. It just leads us into more things to be thankful for and gives us an attitude of gratitude. And, Lord, we're thankful for that. Lord, Lord we get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving this week. Help us all to take time to give you thanks, Lord, for all that you do. We pray this morning, Lord, for our nation, our leaders, our president, our Congress, all of our, all of our military and and first responders and people, Lord, everything's going on in the Ukraine and with with uh, uh, Israel and all those things, Lord. We pray for those that were mentioned this morning. Lord, we ask, Lord, a special blessing upon them. We pray for those on that prayer list that went out this morning. Thank you for the First Lady got that out. So many people on there, Lord. We just lift them up to you. And Lord, we ask you today, Lord, that you help them. And Lord, thank you for these people that are out today. 
And bless our people that are traveling and gone and, and enjoying the week. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that uh, you'll be with them, bring them all back safe. Lord, help us with our lesson today. Open our eyes to your word. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, all right. Man, I tell you, I am uh, told Kathy, if I was in West Virginia, anybody know what I'd be doing right now if I was in West Virginia? Sitting by the fire. Deer hunting, man. Gun season came in yesterday, and man, that's like a that's like a national holiday in West Virginia for a week. And man, people come in from everywhere, and the roads are crowded, and people woods are going are, crazy. Woods are crowded. Woods are crowded. Yeah, absolutely, the woods are crowded, and uh, those, those poor little old deer just running everywhere, just scared to death. But uh, man, if I was there, I'd be right out amongst it probably. Yeah, but uh, son's always He's got one already on the ground. So, all right. We're going to get started up this morning. Again, I appreciate you being out and uh, appreciate those that are online. Please share the program if you can. Some of our people get on later and see it and share it out. I was hoping more people would, would watch the lesson on giving, but they didn't. I don't know that I don't know that they saw the title and said, "Well, I don't, don't want to see that." That may be what it is, but uh, anyhow, we talked a lot. I give you a lot of preliminaries about giving, just kind of building the foundation uh, last week. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today and uh, get into some things about giving. But anyhow, here's point number one today: Biblical giving begins with your life. It begins with your life. That's what biblical giving is. You know, we, we, we're God has made us stewards. Everything He's given us, a steward, somebody that takes care of stuff for somebody else. By the way, is your money yours or the Lord's? Is your life yours or the Lord's? Everything we have really belongs to the Lord. He's just letting us use it for Him. So that makes us a Steward. So biblical giving begins with your life. And God bought you with a price. People say, well, you know, I don't think I don't think I owe God anything, or you know, I don't have to do this, or I don't have to be a good steward. Well, if you saved, you do. Because you owe the Lord everything that you are today. Everything you are, will be, shall be. All that you is, you is. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he bought us with a price. And here's the verse on that. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? I can just hear Paul. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. Which ye have of God and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Wow. So that verse is pretty plain that we've been bought with a price. Everything, our body, spirit, everything we have, is, it belongs to the Lord. So, uh, wow. Biblical giving begins with our life. Everything we have is God's. Honestly. When I think about that, honestly, is there anything that we should withhold from God? If it, is there anything that God would ask you to do or ask of you that you wouldn't do? I mean, that's something to think about. I think sometimes, let me just stop for a minute, rabbit trail for just a minute, or maybe deer hunt. Uh, you know, I think it's sometimes people afraid to get close to the Lord. They're afraid to seek God's will, what He might ask of them. Well, He will ask something of you. Not only just ask, he commands and demands stuff out of us as, as Christians to be good stewards for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So nothing, we should not be, if, if, you're, if you're holding something back from the Lord, that's a sign of selfishness. The Lord blesses you when your hands open up. He, do, he doesn't bless this right here. He blesses this right here. When you open up and can give. Amen. Now, we talked last week, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. God commands you to present your body as a living sacrifice. That's where it starts. You've got to present your body. You've got to present yourself. Remember, when the wise men came to the baby Jesus, what did they give him? They did give him gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the Bible says something right before that. What did they do? They first bowed down and gave themselves. They, they presented themselves. 
God wants you. He wants your, you. You includes everything. So God wants you to present your body as a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. Here's the verse. You know it, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you. Remember what it means to beseech? To beg. I'm pleading with you. I'm begging with you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. I think some people leave that word out. Holy. Say it with me. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable. Re, re, no, it's not, that's not, that's not beyond what anything God would ask. That's, that's just reasonable service. You know, Jesus told the story. I wish I'd thought about that. It just came to my mind right now. Jesus just told, I see Susan on there. I hope Rowdy did good, well, well, man. We just prayed, prayed about that. Give him our love. But, uh, anyhow, I remember Jesus told the parable of the guy that, that had done all these things and had done what the Lord had commanded of him. And he said, you've just really, you've just, you've just, that's nothing to be great and happy about. We ought to do what God asks us. God asks you, what he asks you to do is a reasonable service. And sometimes I think we, we get sidetracked on that and we don't really do what's reasonable. God will bless you for your responsibility in the areas of giving. Amen? You believe that? Amen. Whatever it is, whatever you give, your life, your time, your treasures, your talents, whatever it has you give, what you give, God will bless you. Amen. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that. here. Today. Here's, here's some verses. i got to read these, and I've got them so big, so I'm going to have to scroll along. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 talks a lot about giving, by the way. And we'll be in these verses some over the next week or so. Verse number one starts out, Moreover, brethren, now he's talking to the Christians, right? We do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How? That in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. Well, he was commending those churches. Even in, even in their poverty, they were liberal in their giving. Helping other churches. Verse number three. For to their power, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. I think a key word in that verse is willing. Amen? Amen. Willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty, that we would receive the gifts and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. So Paul was commended to churches for what they had done. They've given themselves and then they had given of their, of the things that the other people, other churches need for the working of the ministry. Number two, biblical giving does several things in your life. Now I'm going I'm to be, this would be several sub points under, under this heading number two. Susan said, Rowdy did well on her way home. God bless that. We're thankful for that. Biblical giving does several things in your life. Number one, biblical giving proves your faith in God. Can we agree with that? Amen. Biblical giving proves your faith in God. This might be the main reason that people do not give to the Lord. Maybe they don't, maybe it's a lack of faith. Maybe they don't trust God to meet their needs and to supply. You know, the Bible says that He can supply all of our needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. God owns it all. Let me say again, does God need your money? No, but He wants you to be a partner and to be involved in this process. So this might be the reason people don't give, they don't have faith in God. Remember I told you, that's what Charles Stanley hit me on. 30, 30 some years ago, probably close to 40 years ago, probably, you know, he did, you know, just looked out of that TV and said, you don't have faith in God. The reason you don't give just like, it's just like he and I were having a personal conversation. Man, I, I mean, it just stunned me. He said, you just don't have faith in God to, to trust God and believe God. 
Wow. Many people simply do not have faith in God to believe that he can provide for them and take care of them if they give. The natural tendency, we, 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 and we all still have that natural part, right? We've still got that physical, worldly, Adam nature to us that wants to get, 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 and hold, hold, hold. And God wants you to give, 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 and let go, 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 so that he can bless, bless, bless. God wants you to trust Him. Jesus, when He gave us the model prayer, remember the model prayer? How's it start? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, our daily bread. God wants you to depend on Him daily to meet your needs daily. And God can do that if we, if we can trust Him and believe in Him. God wants Christians to trust Him for their needs. Too many times we're trusting our checkbook or 401Ks. You probably found out through the years those 401Ks can be blown away just in a matter, just in a moment of time. You know, you can lose everything you got. It can go up and smoke in a matter of time. But God is still able to bless. Amen. God wants Christians to trust Him. That's what, that's what, really, isn't that what being a Christian is all about? We trust God to save us, and then we trust God with every aspect of our life. Remember what point one was? Biblical giving begins with our life. If we trust God to save us, what a trust God to be able to keep us. I don't know if anything, the Bible says without faith, See if you can finish this verse with me. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. God wants you, your life to be moved and to be used and to be worked by faith in Him. It's not by sight. It's by faith. You cannot outgive God. Absolutely. God's not going to be a debtor to anybody. You never stand before God and say, I gave more to you than you gave to me. Well, ain't that going to be embarrassing? Can you imagine standing there at the judgment seat of Jesus and, and you're just waiting to be called up and you get him and say, Hey, I, hey, I want to tell you, I gave more to you than you ever gave to me. Wow. Can you imagine maybe the maybe the TV screen will roll out? like a thousand inch TV screen and Jesus says the angel said hey, just hit that button right there and let me show them and all these things begin to, begin to happen wow God, you know God can bless you amen, amen. Matthew 6.33 well it looks almost Christmassy doesn't it Matthew 6.33 but seek ye not second not third Here's where Christians have, listen, here's where we all have trouble. We want, to, we want God and we want to serve God, but many times we don't want Him to be number one in our lives. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What thing, What are all these things? Remember what, you remember, if you remember that chapter, the preceding verse, we're talking about food and raiment and clothing and those things. You know, the, all these things the Gentiles seek. Jesus said, man, listen, put God first. That's a principle that so many people don't, so many Christians don't get. They want God. They want Jesus. They want to be saved from hell but they're not living to the level of their Christian life that they should because they're not putting Jesus first. Jesus blesses you when He's in the rightful spot in your life. Amen? Amen. Sub point two, biblical giving shows the sincerity of your love for Jesus. You know, now, wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute. I love the Lord. Well, well you know, talk's cheap. Put your wallet where your mouth is. Amen. Put your wallet where you I love Jesus. Well, you listen, if you love Jesus, well to be doing what the Bible says in the area of giving. Amen. Amen. Biblical giving shows the sincerity of your love for Jesus. 
Back in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8, verse number 8, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. That chapter, again, we're talking about giving in that chapter to prove the sincerity of your love. Again, talk's cheap. Put your money where your mouth is or where your wallet is. Amen. Easy to say I love the Lord if it doesn't. And listen, let me just, let me just, maybe I should have said this to start out. It doesn't cost anything to be saved. Jesus paid it all. Salvation is free. But if you want to be what God wants you to be, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some using your talents. It's going to cost you using your treasures. This, I mean, it's going, it's going, it, because, hey, God wants you to put your faith and your trust in him and just be willing to just surrender all and give it to the Lord. What was what? The last scripture you said. 2 Corinthians 8, 8. Well, I got to, I got to go a little bit fast, baby. If I'm going to read it, you don't want me to read it like, love you, love, nobody get anything out of that. 8, 8. 8, 8. 8-8, eight, eight. some of your favorite words, 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> Giving as a thermometer of your love for Jesus. I mean, that's just honest. I'm just being honest with you. You know, I'm just being honest with you. Here's a good question. Do you have enough faith in God and love for Jesus to trust him? With your finances. You know the major preached Sunday. Well, again what a great sermon. On what troubles do in our life. Troubles do a lot of things man. To bring us and to get us and to help us. Be what God wants to be. It's kind of like, it's kind of, it's kind of like a file man. God uses trouble to file us down. And to hone us down. To, so, that, so that we can be what he wants us to be. So here's a good question. Do you have faith in God and love for Jesus to trust him with your finances? I got to say there are a lot of people that don't. Really, it's a lack of faith in God that Christians don't give to the Lord. That's what Charles Stanley said to me years ago when he pointed right at that TV screen. And I put my finger right there on the screen. If you're watching, I said right there, you don't have faith in God. Oh, I've got all kind of faith. You can prove it. Show it. Amen? Amen? Remember, don't kill the messenger. I'm just a messenger, right? right? Don't get mad at the messenger. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Up to you to do it. Here's a great verse. Malachi, chapter number 3, verse number 10. We had a little boy in children's church the other day named Malachi. Boy, he was cute as a button. Oh, yeah. Cute as a button. Malachi. 310. I think we'd have another kid. Maybe we'd have named him Malachi. You want to try for another one, baby? <laughs> no way, huh? No way. Malachi. I like that. Malachi. Malachi 310. Malachi chapter 3 is talking about tithing, by the way, back under the, to the nation of Israel. I believe it can very well apply to us. He said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Remember what I started with last week? If you want God to bless you, I tell you, I tell you, you can really be, God doesn't bless stinginess. God blesses faithfulness. And people who give. And you just look, you, you can look around and see how God blesses in, in people's lives like that. Believe me, you can trust God. Amen? Amen. Can you trust God? Amen. Amen. God will never be a debtor to any man. There it is right there, Brother Bennett. You can't, you can't outgive God. Can't outgive God. I'm trying, I keep trying to think of the guy, this guy, I wish I, I should have looked it up, but I can't think of it. I don't know, maybe one some of you know. This guy had, had this guy built heavy equipment. And there's heavy equipment named after him. I think it starts with a T. Terrific. Huh? Terrific. 
I don't. Boxing. What are you saying? I don't know. If I can't remember, but I remember reading the story that he started out tithing, and by the time he died, he was. I think he was giving like ninety or ninety some percent of his money away. God had blessed him that much. He started out tithing. God just can. I mean, he he built this industry man of these heavy equipments. And God just kept blessing him, and he just kept giving. The more God kept blessing, he the more he kept giving. The more he kept giving, the more God kept blessing. It's a circle. Now, people, you know, again, preachers are lax, lax of talking about giving because it bothers people. But listen, if when you read stories like that and make you want to just get in your pocketbook and say, wow, let me prove God and see if he'll do me like that. This guy was given, I, I said, I need to look at that story. It seemed like it was torn up. Tor Lee, Lee That's it right there. What's his name? Lee Turnero. Lee I can't even say it. Pronounce it. L-E-T-O-U-R-N. Yeah, Lee, 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 yeah, yeah. You were on the right. That's who it is right there, I believe. That, that name right there, I believe that's who it is. Check him out. Google him up and see if that's not him. But uh, that how God had blessed his life. And, you know, you see that so many times that, you know. You know, here, it, it's like the... Giving is like the hydrological cycle. You know how the you know you know the the, the water, the rain, the rain comes down and gets in the seas, gets in the in the lakes, and then the, then the evaporates and goes back up and gets in the clouds and it comes back down. Well, that's the way giving is. God gives to us to give to others, and when we give to others, God gives to us to give to others. And what happens is sometimes you get people that jam that up. And they hold on to it and they say, I'm not going to give. I said last week, I believe this is true. I believe this is the truth. It's easier to give on a little bit than it is to give on a whole lot for a lot of people. I've had people say, oh, God's blessing me so much. I said, well, we can solve that. Let's just pray and ask God to quit blessing you. <laughs> I had, man, people, you're talking squirming. They say, you know, I can't come to church. God's blessed me. I can't, I can't even come to church. God, I said, well, we need, we need to go. God's blessed you too much. Let's just pray that God take some of those blessings away, get you back down where you can function a little bit better. Oh, no, 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 let's don't do that. Then let's be faithful no matter where we are. People say, when I get a lot of money, I'm going to tithe. If you won't tithe on a little bit, you ain't going to tithe on a whole lot. Amen? Number three, sub point of the biblical giving develops an attitude of grace. Talking about attitudes of grace during this, during this month of Thanksgiving. It doesn't take a special talent. Or ability to give, only faith and a willingness to obey. It doesn't take a special talent or ability to give, only faith and a willingness to obey. That's all. If you say, "Well, you know, I don't, I don't have any talent yet," you do have a talent. Everybody, remember, everybody has a talent. God hadn't saved you and put you in the, in, in His family, and not given you a talent. You may not know what it is yet, but he's given you one. But everybody can give. Amen? Amen. Don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> Start talking like that. Don't get quiet. Here's another chapter. Paul's talking about giving. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Here's another principle about giving, the principle of giving. You know, people say, well, I don't believe, I don't believe. Tithing is in the New Testament. Well, take tithing out. Take that word out, but just put giving in there. It's the same principle no matter what you call it. Listen to this. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. You know what? You, you want to put that in country terms? You sow a little, you reap a little. You put a bean in, you might get a few beans out. You put a lot of beans in, you get a lot of beans out. You get you, The more you sow, the more you give, the more you get. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Wow. <coughs> Second Corinthians 9, 7. Every man, now listen, every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver 
If we had to stand at the door, well, one, one thing is we wouldn't have to have a building project if we did this. If we stood at the door and shook you down for your money when you came in and, and shook it out of your pockets, is that the way we're supposed to do it? No. 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 We, we, you know, we'd have the, we, before long, we'd have to turn the lights off. We wouldn't pay, wouldn't pay the light bill. I have heard churches, I told Brother Bill this the other day, man, I can't, I can't imagine this, but you know, I, I say this with all due respect. And please don't, t- I say this with the utmost respect. Black people do church different a lot of times than what we do on many levels. If you've never been in a really uh, on fire black church, you're missing something. They take care of their pastors. I mean, their pastors are held in such high esteem. They give. I've heard t- that they, they they'd had the, the, the membership role, and on Sunday they'd call your name out. And they called your name and you had to walk up and put your offer and put your ties in. Somebody, was that you, Tim, the other day? It was March, Tim. What did the preacher do years ago, March, to your mom? Come to her house. Come to the house. They evaluated what the price of your house was and they told you what you had to pay. Come to the house and evaluated all your, all your stuff and that's what you had to give. Now, there have been rumors told on me in the past and none of them were true. In this aspect, they used to tell back home, we, we can't go to that church. He, you have to turn in your, your W-2 forms to it. <laughs> uh, well, that's a, that, look, listen, listen. So let him give not what? Grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You don't want to embarrass people about giving. You don't want to shake them down about giving. You don't want to call them out about giving. You certainly don't want to go to their home and evaluate their property and their house and tell them what you have to give. You don't want to have people turn in their door. I don't, listen, that, that's, that's between you and God. By the same time, I think sometimes churches and preachers go above and beyond what they should do. That's out of the realm of, 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 of pastoring. And when you start going to people's homes and evaluating their, their uh, you know, that, that sounds like the city tax department. What's that guy called that does that? What's his name? Assessor. assessor. Yeah, that sounds like the assessor. Wow. Can you imagine? Can you, uh, did you, and what did you tell me? You, you quit church right there, or did your mom quit right there? Both, Both quit right there on the spot. I don't blame you. But uh, wow! But so, but you know, God wants us to do it. If you can't, He wants us to feel good about it. He wants you to give with a cheerful heart, a cheerful giver, a loving heart. And God is able. Here's a hey, look at this verse. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Let me go back and read it again. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. I'm going to say again, it's throughout the Bible. You can't outgive God. Now, you don't have to give. I'm back on. I hope I'm back on. I got a phone call, guys, and kicked me off. I don't know if I'm still on or not. Can anybody tell? Phone calls kick kick you off. I don't know if I'm going to have to go back and reset that or not. Can anybody tell? You're on. Yep, John Huey said we got it. Good deal. All right, so let's move good. Phone calls. Don't call during TMT and service time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> let's see, Daniel Jenkins. I always like what Daniel has to say. Let me see what Daniel's saying right there. I believe, let me say, it's trying to get away from it. I believe I would have asked that pastor if I have less than the church, would the church be sending me a check? <laughs> That's, you know, wow. That's the way you want to feel about some of these TV preachers, isn't it? Oh, yes. yeah. Number four, biblical giving, sub point four, biblical giving helps you focus on eternal riches other than earthly riches. Sub so point four, biblical giving helps you focus on eternal riches other than earthly riches. You know, there's a difference between eternal riches and earthly riches. Amen. I tell you what most people are living for. Yes, earthly riches. 
That's, they can't see past their nose. They can't see the eternal value out there in anything. So giving helps you focus on eternal riches other than earthly riches. Philippians 4.17. Not because Paul said, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Paul said, man, listen, I'm not doing it because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. When you give to the Lord, do you, you think God keeps good books? We got a good treasure. Brother Bill does a great job. I got a feeling God does a better job than Brother Bill does. Amen. Man, listen. Paul said, "I'm listen. I desire a gift." He told about to, to be able to help and to do things. But he said, "Not that I might that I might have fruit, not just a gift that may abound to your account." There are eternal blessings out yonder that we will receive once we get on the other side. You believe that? Here, I love these verses, don't you? You can probably quote those. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon what? Earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Big but. But. Did I, did, I, did I use those verses in those big butt series? Man, that'd been a good one. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Listen, here it is. Here it is right here. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, they, they say, they say, that's a good question, isn't it? They say, let me see about this, I thought I, yeah, most of the time all one has to do is check his bank statement to see where his heart is. Right? I don't know where my heart is. Well, look at your bank statement. It'll probably tell you. Because where your treasure is, There will your heart be also. Yeah. Can I just stop and park there for just a minute? Just make a statement. Maybe somebody will see it. Maybe a blessing to somebody. I don't know. People say, well, my heart's with the Lord. People go to church about once every six, eight, ten months. Well, I love the Lord. People never give to the Lord and, and and never do anything. Boy, I love the Lord. You know, I know where my heart is. Yeah, we do too. You know, people used to get up and testify and said, the Lord knows my heart. Truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> the Lord knows my heart. You better believe he knows it. Now, we can fool people. And we can talk a good talk. But when you get up and you say, the Lord knows my heart, you better believe he sure does know your heart. For where your treasure is, there would be your heart also. Amen? So many times Christians are so earthly minded that they're no heavenly good. I remember when I first started preaching, there was a saying going around back in the 70s, 80s, where they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Well, I don't, you know, I've said, you've heard me say, I don't believe that. I don't think you can be too heavenly minded. Really, the more heavenly minded you are, the better you are earthly good. You know, it's, it's the people who are so earthly minded that they are no heavenly good. You get if you drive your tent pegs into this side and down in this in in the, in this old earth, you're going to be disappointed somewhere along the way. But if you drive your tent pegs over on the other side, look, I don't know about you. Listen, I'm 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 retired. Obviously, I keep thinking I probably need to go back and go back to work, make more money. And I think, I think, man, huh? You understand? You want to start a business? Huh? If you'll do the work, I'll haul you around. 
We'll get Big D to join up with us. He'll still go in 80 years old. Won't you, Big D? You'd be, you'd be willing to go back to work. Kathy's going, no, he ain't going back to work. He's going to go the fish and all. Wow. Our fishing season's coming up here, so we got to be careful about that. I'll keep the books for you. Uh, you. You'll keep the books for us? So, would you want paid for that? But, uh, you know, really, honestly, truthfully, <laughs> I've lived the greater, the, 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 you know, I'm 60 some years old. I've been in the ministry 45 years. The majority of my life has been, been, been worked and been lived basing everything on the other side. Amen. It's not been based on this side. I look back, I look back and sometimes, you know, the devil's say, you know, you weren't there and you missed this. You didn't have that. You didn't have this for your family. But you know what? God's always blessed. Amen. Amen. God always blesses. And uh, may not have had everything we wanted, but we've had everything we needed. And uh, I got a feeling, you know, I got a feeling if you be faithful like that when you get to heaven over there, God will take care of that. Watch a few years here compared to eternity over there. Short time here, but a long time there. So, but I think sometimes if we're not careful... And uh, I think, and I think, new Christians they don't understand this. They don't. That's why we need to teach on this and get the word out. They don't understand that God wants to bless you, but they, we get so earthly. My all we think about is man, the, the Almighty Dollar. You know who was that guy? Some of you guys remember there was a preacher years ago. It was a black preacher, and he said God is green. God is green. Do you remember that? I can't remember what his name was. Uh, Man, I can't remember. It's too far back. But he, you know, that's all, and that's all he went on about. That's all he went on about. But man, listen. Wow, he he had the wrong perspective on it. People just looking on this side. We're really looking. We're laying up treasures on the other side. Amen. Amen. Biblical giving shows that God is your priority. It was almost like that. Where your heart is, it shows that God is your priority. Is serving the Lord a priority? I got word this morning because it was about nine fifteen, and I had the the alarm had to kicked on on the door. Bill and Marge had gotten here, and I thought, "Wow, is something? Did I miss a call? Did I miss a text, or is, or something wrong?" Because you know what, if if you, I know that nothing's wrong. They're going to be here. It's a priority. It's a priority. You people to you people. It's a priority to be in church, serving the Lord. Biblical given is the same way. Is it a priority? Let's go back to that verse again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Is it a priority? Is, is serving the Lord, is, is biblical giving, your life, your time, your talents, your treasures, is it a priority or is it something you just do as a sideline? It should be. It should be a priority. It should. It, I'm going to tell you what, if it's not every excuse in the world to keep you out of church, every excuse to keep you from giving, every excuse to keep you from being active, every excuse, if you're just on the fringe and it's not a priority, everything, the devil's got all kinds of distractions out there. And they'll be all, oh, well, you know, listen, <laughs> listen, the, everybody here that gives, you could do something else with your money. I'm sure the devil said, you know, you could do that. You get you a new fishing rod. You could buy you a new gun with that. You go get you a new dress with you. And is that true? Yeah, that, yeah. But it, you got to make it a priority. On Sunday morning, again, I've said this so many times. Sunday morning, we don't get up at the house and take a vote on whether or not we're coming to church. We don't go to bed Saturday night and lay in the bed and say, now, honey, do you think we ought to go to church tomorrow night? It's a priority. I don't say, you know, we need people to do their jobs in, in the church like that. Coming to church, your role, your job it ought to be a priority. I don't get it. Listen, I got to realize there are a couple times a week I got to have a sermon no matter, no matter how much I fish, no matter how much I shop, no matter how much I loaf, no matter how much I run around on the roads, no matter what I do, there are certain times in the week that I must be ready. It's a priority. 
when I'm gone on vacation. Man, I worked and worked and worked on stuff while I was on vacation. They said, well, the preacher's just all flowing. Yeah, I wish that the preacher could just shut down and do nothing. It never happens. If you're gone, you're always working till the next time you got to come back. The next service has got to be here. The next sermon, the next lesson. It's an ongoing thing. You know what? After 45 years, it's a priority. You say, is it a burden? No. It's not a burden. It's a priority. Live your life and serve God as a priority. If you've got a job in the church, it's a priority. We need you here. You don't do it, we've got to find somebody else to do it. Now, maybe somebody's sitting on the sideline waving their hands and say, I'll do it. Which, by the way, remind me, we need more people to get active in children's church again. I've got a plan here coming up I'm thinking about, Kathy and I are really thinking about, but we need some people to, to get active in children. We need more people. We need help back there. I mean, man, we need some help back there. Give a little bit of your time back there. Make it a priority. You can't teach. Help. Ask my wife who's back there Sunday. Do they need help? Yeah, we've got all kinds of kids and personalities and, and different things. Well, listen, it, it make, make everything about the Lord a priority, amen? So many times we're so selfish when we only think of ourselves. So many times we're so selfish when we think of ourselves. Well, preacher, I don't want to be out of church. I understand that. Thank God you don't want to be out of church. I don't want you out of church, but you know what? Serving the Lord in, in some of these capacities are, are things that have to be done. It's got to be a priority, amen? Don't just think about yourself. Think about others. God will bless that, amen? amen. Giving helps us make God the top priority in our lives. You give to the Lord. I used to say, and I, I shouldn't say this because we're getting ready to start that building out there, hopefully. I don't know when. God knows. You know how many times in my ministry we've gone into a building project and some of my biggest givers have quit church and left church and gone to other churches? And it makes me just want to choke them. Huh? Yeah, it makes me, I mean, why would you vote or get a church in, in debt and then walk out the door? I used to, I used to say, maybe we might want to consider this. Sign, sign with your blood that you're going to stay here and help pay off this debt. Man, don't sit and vote and get a check. Listen, we're thinking about what we're going to do for this building. I'm 66 years old. I'm giving a lot of thought in my mind. You don't want to get a church in debt and say, well, I'm deciding I'm going to go downtown. I'm going to go to another church. Why? I've had that. My wife and I, man, it's a heartbreaker. That people that get you involved in a building pro project and get you, get you sign your name on that line, where you got to pay the debt, and then they walk out the door and there's no no concern. That'll be that'll be attached to them. That's just, I'm just I'm ranting on that, but I got a feeling you'd probably agree with that. Right. Biblical giving invests you. What time is it, man? It's almost in God's work. Biblical giving. Here's sub point six. Invest you in God's work. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can I tell you, people say, Well, I could just find out where God's working. That's where I want to be. God's always working. Just get in, just jump in. God's always working. We might not always be working, but God's always working. God's not sitting up in heaven just going, Wonder when the rapture is going to be. No, God's always working. God's always working. You you jump in and get active with God and get to working. And God will bless that. Amen. God will do it. Amen. God's doing a great work and you need to get involved with him and invest in his work. I don't know who, who better you can invest with than the Lord. Amen. I mean, you think about that. You, when you invest with the Lord and work for the Lord, people say, you know, you, people say, you, who do you work? I work for the Lord. That's got a, good That's got a great retirement plan. 
By the way, it's been a pretty good living plan. Not giving is not hurting God. It's hurting yourself. You you have jammed up the blessing. You've cut the line off of God blessing you. That's why we need to tell young Christians about giving. When you don't give, you've cut the line of communication with God on the receiving end of the blessing. And God's wanting to give, but you're not you're not funneling it out. You're not doing your part. You're not giving. God's a giver. We ought to be a. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. You say, what you want about God? God is a giver. God is a giver. God is a giver. Remember, God doesn't need your money. People say, well, you know, and I think, like we said, sometimes people say, well, I'll just get mad and leave. That always frustrates me, but you know what? God's always been faithful Amen. to send somebody just to stick them back in that spot. It's like what, you know, sometimes Christians, I shouldn't say this, but it is the God's honest truth. Sometimes Christians are like little kids out on, on a playground. Just take their bomb, take my ball and go home. We're just take it and go. We don't want you to go. We want you to be here and invest in God's program. Probably if you get mad and quit, the church is not going to shut down. It's going to go right on. And then you'll look back someday and go, wow, I didn't think, I didn't think they could make it without me. Wrong. God, God's, God's always able to move in people's hearts. Amen. God can move in the hearts of others to invest in his work. I mean, think about that. We've had people that have given for this building and for that building over there that God's, no, there's no doubt God's moved in their heart to do it. Only God can do that. So let me say this to you. If you're laying awake at night wondering what to do with your money, maybe God's trying to tell you what to do with it. <laughs> Invest in his work. Amen? At Freedom Baptist Church. At Freedom Baptist Church. Yeah, Bill. At Freedom Baptist Church. I think we need to stop right there. That's 1057. And, and if I get started on that, we, we might not get any further. But, but I hope you got something out of it today. Giving is a great thing. It, it, again, it is. It's, it's, it is. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I think. I think of all the people in our church and people that give and share. And I think I, I'm gonna just can I brag on Evelyn for just a little bit this morning. Evelyn, Evelyn probably feeds Pert and I everybody in the church at one time or another. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I used to be I see it coming and I thought it was for me. Now I see it coming. Who's that for? Well, this for that one, this for that one, this for that one. You know, so-and-so, I made them. You know, isn't that a blessing? Yes. Yes. I, I want to thank you. She cleans the church. We don't have to worry about that every week. The church is clean, and, and she comes down and takes care of that. That's a blessing. That's a, I just want to thank you for that. That's a, that's a, that's a, that you're giving. Thank you for letting me do it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's, the way, that's the way you're supposed to feel. And, right, Big D? You're supposed to enjoy it and love it. If you don't enjoy it, it I, you, you, I don't know. There's something wrong with that. But I, I got a feeling Evan enjoys cooking. Yes. I'm just on this diet, and I can't enjoy it with her. <laughs> but uh, somebody else can enjoy my part. But uh, still, amen. I'm still cooking cabbage. Huh? I'm still making cabbage. <laughs> still make me cabbage and cabbage rolls. Right. Don't forget the cabbage rolls. <laughs> huh? But uh, anyhow, no, isn't it great? Isn't it great? To, you know, you see people. And again, I just, you know, I just wanted to brag on that. We got a lot of people that give and, and do things. You know, John and Pat are here all the time. And, you know, Lorena and Todd. Where is Lorena back there? I mean, you know, all these people that give. Bill's here, Marge here, and Bill and Shirley. All of you people, regulars, Bennett and Ruth, and all of you. You all, you're all here. You know. It is good preaching to the choir, yeah. So you know, just thank you, thank you for that. I could brag on all of you, man. You know, you know, Cliff and Shirley. I mean, you know, I, you know, God sent us all these people, Ruth and Bennett. And I remember when I remember when the church started. Ruth and Bennett. Who started first, Cliff or Ruth? Bennett. And Bennett. Bennett. Cliff. Cliff started. Cliff. You get the credit for bringing Bennett and Ruth in. But uh, I remember somebody told me somebody knew Bennett said, "Boy, I said you got said Bennett." Yielding's coming to your church. You know, that's when we were just starting up. They said, well, you must be something going on. and must be something. You got Bennett because Bennett Yielding's a good man. Amen. And boy, you know what? Bennett Yielding is a good man. Boy, we got all kinds of good people. Amen? Amen. 
we got all kinds of good people. And, and man, I appreciate our people so much. So, uh, yeah, Daniel Jenkins put on there. And here's another good comment from Daniel. Wouldn't you love to have old Daniel down here with him? Daniel, are you in the hills and hollers of West Virginia hunting or not? You ought to be. You can be at that deer shed up there. He said, a true giver wants nothing in return. True giver wants nothing in return. That's a good. That's a good statement. Amen. All right, guys, have a great week. We hope to see you tomorrow night. Now, somebody asked me, Eddie and Eddie and Alicia are out of town, and and they they've gone up into around. Uh, I think it's uh, Saint Augustine, somewhere up in there to visit some friends, and they're going to be. Eddie said, "Is church Wednesday night?" I said, "Well, yeah, we'll be having church Wednesday night." So if, you know, hopefully, I know I know a lot of people are busy and got a lot of things going on. Uh, but uh, if you can be out and be with us and come out and be with us and not catch it online. Daniel said, yes, sir, watching the feeder now. So <laughs> he's up there in West Virginia. He's probably sitting inside the, inside that hunting hunting shed there, man, just waiting. I probably got a heat, heater going, coffee cup and everything else there. So guys, be safe up there. What about you, Big John Huey? If you got one, you probably got one tied up up there. But uh, anyhow, God bless you. We appreciate you. Have a great week. If I don't see you, have a great Thanksgiving. Amen.